G0OGS, uh, Papa Charlie 4 Delta X-Ray, and Papa Fox 9 Zulu. Check me out, I remembered all those call signs. Uh, this is M0 VDO, I'll just be listening lads, but a pleasure as always. Uh, back to you Sasha. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now if you've ever wanted to experiment with making your own SDR software, either for fun, learning, or even having a specific requirement, then GNU Radio Companion is what you want to be looking at. Now I must admit, GNU Radio, or is it GNU Radio, is extremely new to me. And even though I've experimented with it in the past, there's just so much to learn. Now I'm no expert at GNU Radio, and the idea of this video is to hopefully spark some interest into experimenting with this software. And it's another avenue of ham radio that you can learn from in the comfort of your own home. Now this is called a flow, which is made up from blocks. In fact, this is the exact flow that was used at the start of this video. It was designed to receive the 40 meter ham radio band from an RTL SDR, demodulate lower sideband, and then output the demodulated signal to my computer speakers. Now there are a couple of sliders to change frequency, change output volume, and even adjust the RF gain. To try and explain in the most simplest of ways what this software does, well, it takes a radio signal from a software defined radio, and then you can filter bits out. You can even add bits back in, filter out some more, do some demodulation, and then send all of that off to speakers for you to listen to. Of course, demodulating and decoding digital data is also possible, and there are blocks for that too. So let's take a look at how I built this particular flow. So the first thing we'll do is drag on a couple of variables from the right block search panel to the main flow. Now the first will give an ID of SAMP underscore rate and give it a value of 2.4 megahertz. The second variable we will call freak underscore shift and give this a value of 12.5 megahertz. Now I'll be using an RTL SDR version 4 connected to my outside HF antenna and then plugged into the USB port on my computer. Therefore, we need a source block, which is the start of the flow when you're receiving. Now this defines which SDR device we're going to use in this whole flow. So I drag on what's called an Osmocon source. As some of the values will change via some sliders, like frequency and gain, let's drag on some QT GUI range blocks, which will provide the sliders on the user interface when we run the program. The first range block will be RF underscore gain, the second will be volume, and the third will be the frequency, which I've named LSB underscore freak. Now if you're following along, you can pause the video to copy the values that I'm using, or just download this flow from the link in the description. Now back onto the Osmocom source block, and on the frequency box, we can enter the ID of the QT GUI range slider for LSB frequency. This means you do not have to define a fixed frequency, and the block will take its value from the slider at runtime, i.e. when the program is running. Now the same goes for SAMP rate, but this is a fixed variable, as it's used in other places in the flow. So it makes sense just to change that one value in one place if you need to change it. Next, I'll add a QT GUI sync and then drag from the out of the Osmocon source to the in on the QT GUI sync. This will send anything received to a visual waterfall and scope. This kind of gives you some visual feedback that something's going on. As we'll need to perform some filtering on the signal, I'll now add a low pass filter and then drag a line from the out of the Osmocom source to the in of the low pass filter. Now take note that the cutoff frequency that I set here is 2.7K, which is essentially the bandwidth we want to receive, a bit like the bandwidth control on a normal ham radio receiver. Next, we add a rational resampler and change a couple of values here, interpolation to 12 and decimation to five. Next, we add a complex to float block and then two Hilbert blocks, then another two complex to float blocks. 
we need to take the top output and lower output of the last two blocks to null sinks, just like this. Then we need to find and drag on a subtract block, which we drag the two outputs from the complex to float blocks to the inputs of the subtract block. We now need a multiply cons block, which will connect to the output of the subtract block. We need to change the IO type to float, and then in the constant text box, we enter the GUI range ID for the volume control, which is just the word volume in my case here. Now, lastly, we need an audio sync. For this, we need to select a sample rate, and for this, I will select 48 kilohertz. Now, if you leave the device name blank, then this audio sync block will automatically use the default audio output of your computer. Now, I know I haven't gone through what each block does specifically, and that's simply because, well, I'm not entirely sure what some of these blocks actually do, as I'm still pretty much learning myself. So let's click on the run button and see if it actually works. Estoy utilizando un, eh, una antena, una caña de pescar en vertical. Antena caña de pescar. And plus whatever it was you said. Because um, all I've been doing, Steve, this is where maybe I'm going completely wrong. All I've been doing is receiver source RX1 and 2, and then down to reference source and go to R or either RX1 or RX2 and see which one is allowing me to move. So it appears that it's working and even the frequency slider works too, along with the volume control. The RF gain control does work, but in the Osmocom source block, you can change it so the RF gain is automatic, which is a little bit better. Now, if you're wondering if you can use this software to design a flow to transmit, and assuming you have an SDR that transmits like a Pluto SDR or a Hack RF, then yep, you can also design a flow to transmit like this. we have GNU radio transmitting through a hack RF into a dummy load. And then on the right, we have STR++ connected to an RTL STR receiving the transmitted signal. Now, please always check your local laws when it comes to transmitting, as you really don't want to knock on the door from those authorities. And most of the time, you will need a license, whichever frequency you're transmitting on. As mentioned earlier, you can also use GNU Radio Companion to receive, demodulate and decode digital data. In this flow and example, we're decoding ADSB packets from aircraft that are flying high above the clouds. Of course, you can then manipulate this data however you like and send it off to any endpoint you desire. GNU Radio Companion runs on most operating systems and I'll leave a link to the wiki where you can choose the install for your operating system. Now, I will point out that you must have Python installed on your computer, so just bear that in mind if you come across any issues. Now, the examples shown in this video are pretty basic. There's a lot more complex things that you can do with it, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of examples on the internet that you can go and take a look at, especially on GitHub. Anyway, guys, if you use this software and you've made some interesting things, then let us know down in the comments below. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.